Imagine a kettle such that each point on its surface is associated with a unique vector from the origin of a randomly chosen coordinate system. We want to transform this kettle such that all the green arrows can be scaled, so increase or decrease in length, and can be rotated, so change their angle with respect to the axis of our coordinate system. However, we can make a specific transformation where all the green arrows are free to move around and they can change as they want, and this way deforming the surface of the kettle. But at the same time, there are three special red vectors that do not rotate. And the only thing that they are allowed to do is to change their lengths, so increase or decrease it. These special vectors are called eigenvectors of the transformation and the amount of which they increase or decrease is called their respective eigenvalues. Not all transformations have these special vectors, called eigenvectors, and these special scalars called eigenvalues, but some do. When a transformation does have these properties, we say that it is a diagonalizable transformation. We'll see shortly what it is supposed to mean. But first of all, let's see why these eigenvectors with their respective eigenvalues are so important. In dynamical systems, eigenvalues of the system's matrix indicate stability. For example, if all eigenvalues have negative real parts, the system converges to a stable state. Positive real parts suggest instability. In mechanical systems, Eigenvalues relate to oscillations and damping behavior. In quantum mechanics, observables like energy, momentum, position, angular momentum, spin, and so on, are all represented by operators, so matrices. Their eigenvalues correspond to measurable quantities, and eigenvectors represent quantum states. Okay, but... How do we calculate these special scalars and vectors? Well, let's see a concrete example in two dimensions. We have the transformation matrix. It transforms vectors in the real plane into other vectors in the same real plane. Since we want to calculate the special vectors that do not rotate, but just get scaled by a specific factor, we need this equation to be satisfied. Notice that this equation can be interpreted as after A acts on the vector V, it does not change direction, just intensity, or length, by a factor of lambda. We can write it as this. Now we introduce the identity matrix I in front of V, so acting on the vector V. We had to do it to make sure that we're comparing apples with apples. In other words, that we have a vector quantity in the right-hand side and another vector quantity in the left-hand side of the equation. This is a homogeneous linear system, and we will see why shortly. We want to find non-trivial solutions for this linear system, so solutions that are non-zero vectors. If these non-trivial solutions exist, we say that the matrix A minus lambda i is singular, and therefore, it's like this. This is called a characteristic equation. And this equation is exactly what will give us the eigenvalues that we're looking for. Now let's calculate the eigenvalues real quick. If you guys are enjoying this video and learning something, please do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. So using this equation, we can expand these matrices. First, we need to multiply lambda by the identity matrix. Then we need to subtract them. After calculating the determinant and imposing that it is equal to zero, we find a quadratic equation. So basically, this is a parabola with two roots, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Using the formula for solving a quadratic equation, we find two values, lambda 1 and lambda 2, and these are our eigenvalues. Now let's go back to the equation we saw before. In order to calculate the eigenvectors related to each eigenvalue, lambda 1 and lambda 2. So using this equation and working on the math here, we'll end up with a multiplication between a matrix and a general vector with components vx, vy. And then we find that it actually gives us a system with linear equations in terms of our eigenvalues, lambda. Let's find the eigenvector v1 of the eigenvalue lambda1, which is 1 plus the square root of 6. So solving this linear system of equations,
we'll find Vx equals to the square root of 6 over 2 Vy. We found the same expression of the x component in terms of its y component in both equations. Now we can build the general vector Vx Vy. Factorizing Vy outside of the vector, we get Vy times the square root of 6 over 2 and 1, which spans the one-dimensional space that is a line defined by the direction square root of 6 over 2, 1, for all values vy that are real numbers. Therefore, we can consider vy to be 1, and as a consequence, the eigenvector for the eigenvalue lambda 1, which is 1 plus the square root of 6, is this one. So after the transformation a, all the vectors in the line defined by the direction square root of 6 over 2, 1, were scaled by a factor of 1 plus the square root of 6. What about the second eigenvector, the one for lambda 2, which is 1 minus the square root of 6? Using the same process, you can find v2. So we found out that there are two linear spaces that get stretched in the transformation. Great. But, to be honest, this was a very simple example, a very simple case, because everything just turned out to be perfect. I invite you guys to invent a random square matrix and try to calculate its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. You can use the same method that we did here in the video, but I'm gonna warn you, it's very likely that you'll run into some difficulties, and we'll see why. But if you want to practice more, check out the PDF link in the description below, where you're gonna find salt exercise related to this. Let's see, for example, what happens when we change this transformation just a little bit. Replace 3 with minus 3. Once again, we use the characteristic equation to find the eigenvalues. Calculating the determinant here, we find a quadratic equation, which is represented by a parabola. But this time, there are no roots, because this parabola does not touch or crosses the lambda axis. So there are no real solutions. The eigenvalues, then, would involve the term the square root of delta, which is equal to the square root of minus 24, which is a complex number. And therefore, the eigenvalues will not be real numbers. This is very important to notice, because depending on the context, real eigenvalues can mean and imply completely different results from complex eigenvalues. For example, when applying it to the context of quantum mechanics, as you can see, that's our favorite application of linear algebra. Things that are considered physical observables like energy, position, momentum, and so on, are all eigenvalues of special matrix transformations called Hermitian matrices, or operators, that act on eigenvectors called quantum states, or eigenstates. If the eigenvalues are not real, then they cannot be interpreted as observable quantities in a physical experiment. Okay. Going back to the mathematical theory of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, let's recap the general process for computing these quantities, and let's see some new important properties. The first step is to solve the characteristic equation, and thus find the eigenvalues lambda. The second step, for each eigenvalue lambda, solve the linear system of equations, to find the eigenvectors v of the matrix A. These eigenvectors live in a subspace of Rn, or Cn, if we are studying the complex case. The subspace is called the null space, or kernel, of the matrix A minus lambda i. The kernel can also be seen as a space that has all its vectors mapped to the null vector, by the mapping A minus lambda i. It is important to notice as well, that we are allowed to call this kernel a subspace, so it is more than a set with no structure. And this is because of the following three properties. The first one is that the zero vector needs to belong to the kernel of this matrix. The second, if you choose two random vectors in the kernel, then adding the first vector with the second vector produce another vector that still lives in the kernel. In other words, it is closed under addition. And the third property is that if you choose any random vector in the kernel and a scalar, and you multiply the scalar c times this vector v, you still get a vector inside of the kernel. In other words, it is closed under scalar multiplication. Another important thing to notice is that sometimes different eigenvalues have different eigenvectors. However, there are instances in which two eigenvalues share the same eigenvector. For example, let's use a recipe to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix transformation A 
4104. Using the same formula as before, we can calculate this determinant. But this time we'll find only one eigenvalue, 4, which appears twice, so it has multiplicity 2. We can say that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are 4. And now using the second equation, the one to find the eigenvectors, and substituting lambda with 4, after working on the math here, you'll find that vy is 0, which implies that there's only one free variable, vx, the x component of this vector. And therefore, the eigenvector we found is 1, 0. This is a degenerate eigenvector. We conclude that the matrix A is not diagonalizable and that the two eigenvectors are linearly dependent. Therefore, for all practical purposes, these two eigenvectors are the same. This kind of matrix is also called a defective matrix. Degeneracy is very interesting for practical purposes as well. In quantum mechanics, for example, we can look for eigenvectors and eigenvalues for the Schrodinger equation. H hat is the Hamiltonian operator, so a matrix, which gives the energy levels of the system, represented by its eigenvalues. Its eigenvectors are quantum states, or configurations, psi1, psi2, and so on, of the system. Degeneracy in this equation would mean that multiple quantum states, like psi1, psi2, etc., correspond to the same energy E. Which means that a system, like an electron in an atom, for example, can exist in different configurations while still having the same total energy. In order to practice how to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, check out the PDF link in the description. We also have a site where we post all of the PDFs and everything related to the channel, where we have a research section where you can submit your own research or just interesting explanations of mathematical principles so that others can see your work, peer review it and comment on it. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.